On the 11th of April 2021, Kim Potter fatally shot Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Here's why she's a criminal. My argument will be mostly focused on these videos by Nate the Lawyer and Actual Justice Warrior, both of whom are on the side of Kim, claiming that the jury reached the wrong conclusion in this case. Both Nate and AJW are correct when they say that the facts of what happened are not disputed. A group of officers, including Potter, saw a car with an air freshener hanging from its rearview mirror, which is a violation of the state driving code. They further noticed that said car was in a left turn only lane but had a right turn signal, and it had expired tags. After stopping, the officers discovered that Dante had no license or insurance and had a restraining order against him, in addition to an arrest warrant. This prompted an arrest, which Dante attempted to resist by driving off, to which Potter responded to by attempting to draw her taser but reaching for her sidearm instead, firing a single, fatal shot at Dante Wright. Nothing that Dante did constitutes a crime under natural law. That is, nothing he did initiated any conflicts over scarce means. Namely, he did not violate the NAP. One may hang air fresheners wherever they damn well please on their own property. The state has no property right over the road, so they may not require that Dante not hang it, or use his turn signals in any which way he desires. Ditto for the expired tags and for the lack of license or insurance. None of these are things the state has any just say over. The restraining order that I noted above is also not cause for arrest, and the warrant that was out on him was for carrying a hand gun without a license, also not a crime under natural law. Therefore, there was no just cause to arrest Dante, making it not an arrest, but a kidnapping, one that Dante may resist at will. Any action on the officer's part to curtail this resistance is further aggressive action. Kim would be guilty even if she had used her taser. Moreover, we can say that this is not a manslaughter, but a murder on Potter's part, as she had mens rea. Someone has mens rea if they were aware that they were committing the crime, i.e. if I am walking over a field and I accidentally step on your glasses, I didn't deliberately do so, so I had no mens rea. In this case, the just punishment is just restitution. Namely, I may be forced to have your glasses repaired. This is not the case for the officers. They were all aware that they were subduing Mr. Wright, therefore they had mens rea. The fact that they thought this was a just thing to do has no bearing on this fact, just as it doesn't for the men and women who carried out the Holocaust for the greater good of the German people. Both are guilty. This brings us to the second prong of proportional justice, retribution. Where someone is guilty of a crime and they knowingly did the crime, they may be subject to both restitution and retribution. Retribution being where the victim or their heir may have the act done unto the perpetrator. In this instance, Dante's heir is justly allowed to decide whether Miss Potter is also fatally shot. Any prevention of this is yet further aggression on the part of the state. <laughs> Now, before I get into what I believe was a serious mistake on the part of AJW, I ask that you hit the like button if you want to see more libertarian analyses of hot button cases. So, AJW's argument as to the circumstances, if it was true, would make the arrest in question a just one, and thus, Dante would not be allowed to resist, so Potter would be innocent in this shooting. AJW states multiple times throughout his videos on the topic that Dante's warrant was for robbing and strangling a woman, which is something that he did do, but this is not what the warrant was about as AGW's own source confirms. The article notes that the warrant was for a separate charge, later elaborating that this was, as I stated above, due to carrying a handgun without a permit and resisting the arrest for that. But it should be noted that I do not blame AGW for coming away from that article assuming that the warrant was for robbery. It is written in a very opaque manner and in the old version of the page, it outright states that the warrant was for robbery. I myself have run into issues with how frequently the Daily Mail are patching this piece. I have an old screenshot of the page stating the specific case number, but this too is now gone, and I didn't have an opportunity to archive it, so it is entirely possible that we do not yet know what exactly the warrant was for. The best I can tell is that it was for a possession of a handgun, but if anyone can find something solid on it actually being for the robbery, please let me know and I will issue an update in the pinned comment. This is what the entire case relies on, whether the arrest was for an actual crime or something that the state simply says is a crime, so it is very important. I noticed in AJW's first video on the Kim Potter case that he's wearing a Ron Paul Revolution t-shirt, so I suspect that he may be a minarchist, and if you're in the same boat, I suggest that you watch this video where he pose a challenge to minarchists.